Hello and welcome along to episode 86 of the Don Michele sponsored A View from Section C. Senior, it's the playoffs edition. Wow. I think we're going to be here, did we? I'll tell you, I've, I've had some humble pie this week, I must admit, uh, Listen, and I'm no embarrassed to say I said to you the whole time, there's a long way to go, we're making it. Listen. It was the optimist you give, this time, but no, you, you were, were the not. pessimist. Didn't give your push. When you were leaving on Saturday, you were telling everybody, I'll see you next season. I jokingly. No, no, see you're not going to worry that. The thing is, we were still in the playoffs on, on Saturday night. Yeah, like we were, we were still eighth place. Yeah, but, but uh, listen, I said yeah. I've said it on here for weeks. Long way to go, senior. You know, nah, nah, that's it. Like, long yeah. way to go, long way to go. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, we yeah, have happily, happily proved fucking wrong. Delighted, yeah, yeah. <laughs> even more delighted that I won another auction. Oh, yeah, he did, folks. I did. Won, yeah, I won the Bairn. Well, well, I was about to say, many? fuck, I won the Bairn's auction. Fuck, that's a bit, that's a bit dodgy, is it? Uh, yes, the Bairn's jersey. Yes. How many emails so, did you get to tell you you won it? 335. <laughs> I thought, this is what's happened here. How have I got, how have I got 335 emails? <laughs> and I look. 335 for the stars. For the stars, uh, I think maybe young Michael had had maybe had one too many at the Player of the Year awards. <laughs> <laughs> someone someone was pressing the button. I just kept sending, sending, sending. But uh, yeah, so yeah, number fourteen again. So is so, that what's that? You got feelings away top and feelings Bairns top. Yes. Okay, so that means I'll be getting a feelings away top. Thanks, senior. No. Nope. Um, moving you on, know, junior, you got a croaker. Fucking top that you've no gave us back yet, so then I start your nonsense. Right. Well, we'll do it. We'll do an nope. exchange on that. No. Nope. Um, because we all love that man. Um, yeah, yeah. So, got to bring him up every week. Got to bring him up. So, um, we're starting the show this week with uh, call outs. So, um, I am making a call out. Oh. And um, I told this oh. guy I was going to make this call out. Um, oh. To him. Oh. I was sent messaging him last night about it. And it's none other than our good friend and fake Italian, Craig Riley. Oh, right, okay. Craig Riley came home, met up with Mrs. Donnelly for a coffee on a public holiday. And when I last spoke to him, he says, I'll meet up when we're him. Did he meet up with us? Did he fuck? Well, I think he's trying to tell you something, eh? Um, he then gave us some some excuse. Fucking as soon as seen the message laugh. Fucking nah. honestly. It was like it was like speaking uh fucking hockey gram. The story just kept going. So uh Riley, yeah, no happy with you. Called it. You just made the list. Oh, Riley yeah. has made the list. Oh, I'm not happy about yeah. it. I am not happy wow. about it. Riley well, fucking stood me up. Well, that's no bad then, because I'll call it, I'll call it you, Riley, and Mrs. Donnelly then, because I never even got any invite. Finneas. Listen, listen, senior. Riley had messaged me a while back and said, yeah. "Listen, I'm home in April. I'll meet up with her. I'll meet up with all yes." That was it. He met up with Mrs. Donnelly, and that was it. So yeah, yeah. Um, but then he did also message to say it sounded like he missed a lot of fun uh, against the Flyers. Oh, he missed a lot of fun against the flyer. Yes, which we will touch on. (laughs) Which Which we will no doubt touch on. Um, Um, But she, that Pfeiffer, when it comes to it... You just made the list! She made the list. She certainly made a fucking list. Um, That's because she was fucking half pissed. (laughs) (laughs) She was just drinking coke as well, the fucking daft. But yeah, it was an event. So we've got... But you know that that's a call out. But we've got to sort of balance it out with a shout out, and they're back. They're back. They delivered. They delivered. The brownie girls were back. They delivered. Becky and Lara, podcast guys. We got our brownies. 
Happy days. It's only it's only took them all season this season to get them. That's but okay. That's okay. We'll, we'll not be greedy. We'll not be greedy. No. Although I just promised you. her homemade ones, though. Well, I'll tell you, I'm looking forward to the playoff brownies. Oh. See what they're going to be like. Brownies. Maybe playoff cookies. Ooh. I do like a good cookie. Um, but yeah. So, go straight into it. It was a weekend of high expectations, a lot of nervousness. Um, I was texting Dave during the week when he was asking us if I was up for it. And I said that to him, listen, Dave, we've all been here before against Fife in a must-win weekend. I'm not getting my hopes up. I'm just It's just another game, as far as I was concerned. Another game, get the win. Because um, the last time we got my hopes up, we got absolutely pumped over two legs in the playoffs for them. Yeah. When, yeah. They, when, they, pra- when they practically sold out our yeah. home rink. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, it's... Uh, Erse was twitching all day. All day. <laughs> Because that was the same as you. We've, we've been there before with this lot. Eh? Uh, and it just, although uh, eventually we made it, it just, it was an absolute car crash on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Saturday night, uh, we did host the Five Flyers with a sold out DIA. Um a little bit more than what I think the sold out is, though I think we squeezed in an extra few to stand around the boards. Because when I went for a pee, I couldn't get past anyone before the game started and we had the 20 minute delay, not for the crowd. Yep. But for Andy Dalton and his fucking ferry for Belfast. Anyway, 2,648. Um, so hats off to everyone in attendance. That includes our unwashed friends from Fife. Ryan Valentini got stars 1-0 up at 9.29, assisted by Spencer Nass. Kevin, where's he at? Kevin Wears, 11.36, equalised. Kyle Osterberg put Flyers 2-1 up, 22.46. Jake Elmer equalised at 23.52, assisted by Johnson and Dow. And then it just kind of went a bit peak tongue for there. Kyle Osterberg got his second at 25.42. Timo Pulkinen at 31.23. Colin Shirley No at 46.09. And then Osterberg with his hat trick at 55.51. Given the Flyers, and I hate to admit it, probably deserved two points. Yeah, definitely. Definitely deserved it. Um... I thought the first period, I thought we played really well the first period. Uh, yeah, I agree. And then even even when we went 2-1 down, we were still there. We were hanging about, as you said, when you were going through the scores. We get to 2 all, and then it just collapsed for there. Absolutely yeah. collapsed for there. Uh, which, at that point in time, you just didn't see it coming. There, there was obviously, there, there, there seemed to be a nervousness, but we seemed to be up for the game. Um, it was as soon as he went three two up. It was as I yeah. said. It was a car crash, and nothing, nothing was stopping them. Absolutely nothing. I think, I think they they sussed out a way to beat us at that point, and they just kept doing the same thing. Although yeah. mistakes did creep into our play, bad plays were getting made. As I think Mark said it. And his interview, we got, we seem to get away from what we were doing in the first period, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and it failed miserably. But yeah. before the game, we'd have we'd have anticipated a six-two Flyers win, maybe no. Uh, even at two all, three-two Flyers, did I see them scoring another three to really pump with? No, I didn't. But I said, where the game goes, eh? You got on top. And, or you get in a rut and you kind of go out that rut. And mm-hmm. teams like a Fife, we, Osterberg, Lajanez will just absolutely destroy you. They're too yeah. fast. And that was the difference. Yeah, um, yeah definitely. Uh, I think I think all four 
of like the first four goals, I think, all came off of mistakes or turnovers. Yeah. Um, it wasn't like it was just, you know, clearing the boards or we started from the back. It was, I think, I'm pretty sure it was certainly three of the first four were uh, mistakes. Um, and I was I was just like, God, fuck, like, both teams are capitalising. Fife yeah. made a mistake, we score. We make a mistake, Fife score. Same again, same again. I'm like, fucking hell, right, okay. It's, yeah. uh, I think whoever tightens up, the best here is going to be the one that wins it. Yeah. Um, and I think it was Fife tightened up more. Um, yeah, it seemed to be once they got the lead, they wanted it more. Um, I felt, I, I don't know what happened to us. I think we just, we sort of collapsed in and in, in a shell. Um, we just couldn't get out there. Um, and they were just going past us as if, as if some players weren't there. Like, I can't mind what goal it was. It was either the fourth or the fifth. I think the guy going down the wing just blew past Chris Ingalls. Absolutely blew past him as if he wasn't there. And that was that was a worrying sight to see because Chris isn't normally like that. Um, mm. He normally plants somebody on their ass. But, you know what? It's, it, was, it was a league game. And I think you had to keep reminding yourself it was a league game. That it yeah. wasn't a playoff game, and it, and it was like, oh shit, we're four behind. How we'll never catch us up. It was, we needed two points over the whole weekend. Mm -hmm. We never got them on Saturday, so then you go into Sunday and hope for the best and see what happens. But yeah. that that result, I must admit, that result put the fear up me for going into there on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was no Sunday. There. I don't think there was a lot of pass marks for for everybody on on Saturday. Yeah, who was your man of the match then? Um, I think we agreed on it when we were speaking. Uh, Edgate to big Chris McKay. I thought he was yeah. outstanding on Saturday. Yeah, you did. You did see somebody else, and then I mentioned McKay, and I thought, and I said that that I thought McKay was was great in the first. He was solid in the second, or average, you know. Did a yeah. job in the second, uh, third period. I think everyone just fell away, and that was what you know. But for me, Chris McKay, couple of big hits, um, yeah, a couple of chances. He's breaking the ice for, for a big man this season. He's progressively gotten better I just, with speed. Uh, <laughs> he's suddenly become an offensive weapon with that, is he? That he could go coast <laughs> no. to coast nearly every yeah. game, and it's yeah. it's just so. Sort of unexpected, I think. You know, teams that are just he's not going to do this. Look at the one. Next thing, and he yeah. glides and he moves and he bobs and weaves and but yeah, I kinda mind. I kinda mind why I said um I, I, I must have I disagreed with with the sponsor. I I didn't mm -hmm. think that was and Jake would probably I know he scored. But he would probably be the first to admit that wasn't the Jake's greatest game. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I honestly can't remember um, who he said. I, I think I might have said maybe uh, Bowden or somebody like that. Can't yeah. mind. But uh, yeah. yeah, overall, yeah. I think yeah. once Chris once McKay. once you'd mentioned that, I thought, oh, fuck it, ain't enough. Eh? But Chris had a really good game. So yeah, Chris McKay for me. Yeah. Um, just just moving back slightly, I forgot about uh, another recall out that I was going to do. Um, it was to a certain 50-50 uh, seller outside before the okay. game. Yeah. Mama Betty. Bother the life out with. Bother the life out of folk. Punching folk. Yep, shocking. Um, she said something else about Pfeiffer. She was a representative of the club. Oh, <laughs> terrible behaviour. Absolutely terrible behaviour. It, 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 it just shouldn't be, it, it shouldn't be going on. Not, not a... a you know, a family sport. <laughs> it's a family sport. Um, yeah. So, you know yeah, I mean? she's made the list too many times now. So, she's uh, just permanently on the list. For the start, like, even the start of next season, she's on the list yeah. straight away. But Hockey, speaking of... family, you know what I mean? Family sport. And that was what we wee pal for Fife decided to try and tell her. As she turned around when Fife scored, cupped her ears, gave you the, can get it up you, yeah? Three or four times and said it's a family sport. Stop shouting at us. You only got shouted at because you were a wee fanny. That's why yes. you got shouted. Nobody said anything to you 
when you were sitting there. Nah. And then you turned around and started shouting and jumping and doing you know, Abdi that up your sign when you scored. And that's how you got fucking abuse for Frank. And swiftly removed from section C. Swiftly removed. And I had to go and sit in the bar, at the back uh, of the bar for the rest of the game. So uh, you just probably watched it on the telly. <laughs> imagine. Money, I, hint. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I imagine, right, actually being five fans sitting in section C, which is fine. No bother. Then starting our shite. Then shouted on security. I know. I know. <laughs> Who then moved her. Yeah. Idiot. And, then she, and, and she actually said to Stoney that it was the security that told them to sit there because there was no seats in the fife end because they were season ticket holder seats. Yeah. Oh. Again, what? Again, I, I, asked, right. I, I was going to ask there's... her if her name was Wayne. Uh, wait, Wayne, fuck. fuck. There, listen, there's... There, <laughs> Sorry, there's Daisy. No, there's no... There's no any issues. People can sit where they want, right? But then I behave like that, right? When your team scores, yeah. we've got every right to jump about and cheer and sing songs when our team scores. That that is technically our section, right? It's the home section. The majority of the season ticket holders are there. Although there are season ticket holder seats going going right around that rank now. Yeah. But then I behave like that because if you behave like that, you're going to get it. And I'll be honest with you. If I behaved like that in Fife, I'd expect to get the same shite. Yeah. You just done a day. Yeah. Stand up, cheer for your team scoring. Yes. Put your hands up. Yes. Come on. And then sit down again. Yeah. Then I turn yeah. round and antagonise people because you'll just pe- get me dealt. personally. Senior, me personally, um, there has to be a designated away section now. Yeah. Too much shit happened on Saturday, and yeah. we're not going to the other shit that happened. Um, because I still didn't get the full stories about what happened, so I'm not yeah. going to speculate. Um, but I think there does need to be a, an away section. Again, we've all spoke about it. We've put it on so people have spoken about it on social media all week, uh, week and stuff as well. Is that it's stuck in it's stuck in the corners like what every other club yeah. does to their away fans. Yeah. Um, so continuing with the 51 Club sponsored game reviews, we did go to Fife on the Sunday night. A lot of people were worried about buying tickets after what we'd saw on Saturday. And then this beautiful thing happened. Um, after two minutes and 19 seconds, Ryan Valentini put us 1-0 up, assisted by Nas and Harms. Second period, Anthony Rinaldi doubled the lead, assisted by Big Sexy Villio and you know what? He's also a big sexy James Phelan at 24.09. Anthony Rinaldi got his second, assisted by the big tough sexy, 36.47, Xavier Pouliot. Fife pulled one back the penalty shot through Troy Lajeunesse at 46.54. And then Brendan Harms with the icing on the cake with the empty netter, assisted by Britain and Dow at 58.00. 53, giving Stars the two points, the regulation when we wanted, and a 4-1 win. Yeah, great win. Just didn't think, didn't think it would happen, but Big Tuna decided he was going to shot Big Specky up and <laughs> put on an absolute <laughs> clinic, I believe. So, yeah. Yeah, good on him. Absolutely fucking delighted for him. Uh, there had been a lot of pressure on that laddie. Yeah. Considering some of the goals that, that, that we, and I'll say not he, we conceded uh, on Saturday. Um, and he goes in there, which would have been a tough gig. Five, that, that was, they were not going to let it down because they did not, they wanted to finish up as high as they could. And if they took maximum points, I think they finished sixth. I think I'm not yeah. either that or seventh, right? But they certainly wouldn't have finished an eighth. Um, so they would have. That was now. I oh, come up. We'll, we'll we'll take it easy and we'll, we'll just go through the motions. Uh, it was a fantastic scoreline, and from all accounts, an absolutely fantastic performance by, by the guys. Eh? But yeah, humble pie right in big spec his face. Big spec his face. Um, yeah. But yeah, so the league standings did end up finishing 
um, with Fife in eighth. Uh, if they did have those two points um, or even got a point, um, they would have finished in sixth over Coventry. Coventry would have been seventh and we would have been eighth. So, uh, starting at the top, Sheffield Steelers champions are in first place. 91 points in 54 games. They've only lost nine regular league season games all season. Not even in double figures this year. Um, so good luck to fight for that. Cardiff Dills in second, 77 through 54. Belfast in third, 71 points through 54. Manchester in fourth on 61 points. Guildford in fifth on 58. Coventry in sixth through 52. Uh, ourselves in seventh, 51. And Fife also in 51 and eighth. Nottingham just missing out by a point uh, in ninth place. And good to see the Glasgow clan holding everyone else up in the league. In bottom spot, 10th place. Just to repeat that again, 10th. Bottom, massive result, Glasgow clan, 49 points. Did last, just like the Rangers did. It was Happy tremendous. days. I messaged you. Happy was, days. Where was that? I was coming, I was at basketball, I was coming back to basketball, and you'd also message to say, um, it's looking like Cardiff right now. I think we were only in the halfway through the second period. Yeah. And I said that be great if the scores just finished as they are just now. Nottingham had won. Um, Car- uh, Car- Glasgow were obviously still playing against Cardiff. I thought Cardiff may have laid down because obviously the whole Pete Russell thing. Yeah, sort of that. Um, get the- try and get them in the playoffs. But um, we did their job. Fife did their job. Currently did their job. Cardiff yeah. did the job. Nottingham yeah. did the job. And Glasgow finished bottom. fucking bomb. Yeah. Massive. Massive. Massive underachievers. <laughs> right? And can what? It is just so funny because it just goes to show, I don't know if you noticed this, right? That see at the start of the season, and I think it was Lewis that done it, it started the massive thing, right? And it began yeah. to get, really get going. And it was getting them their due, eh? They made it a big thing. But see, as the season went on, yeah. it got quieter and quieter on the massive side, right? Yeah. Until today, when they made an absolute massive arse of it, when they release a new T-shirt, the Western Playoff Edition. You're not even in the playoffs, lads. Why are you selling playoff T-shirts? Idiots. Yeah. Also, but it's so order, funny. They don't say order that. Yeah. Uh, but again, what when you look at that league table, um, I'm glad we're no eighth. I must admit, right? Because yeah. I think Sheffield would be too strong for us over two games. If you finish sixth or seventh, I think it doesn't matter because Cardiff and Belfast are on a par for me. Um, I'm, I'm easily if we've got Cardiff. I'll take Cardiff, and I think we've got a chance. I really do. And if we had Belfast, I'd be saying exactly the same thing. But I'll tell you, Sheffield will not be looking forward to playing Fife, especially if Fife keep it close on the Friday night. Right. You think it is? Yeah. Yeah. Before they go in there on Sunday. Yeah. They will yeah. not like it. But yeah, so you've put the fixtures up there, right? Could you imagine? If the final four were Fife, Dundee, Coventry, and Manchester. I know. Yeah. Um, so Sheffield obviously have the Fife Flyers. Uh, first leg being played on Friday. Um, Cardiff and ourselves, uh, first leg Saturday. Belfast, Coventry, the same. Uh, Manchester and Guildford finishing off the quarter final draw. So, uh, yeah, I think it would be uh, something else if we managed to get uh, oh. Fife, Dundee, Coventry and Manchester in the final four. <laughs> That'd be so funny. Or, or can what? Or even Gil- can, like even Guildford, doesn't matter who Manchester and Guildford, but Fife, Dundee, Coventry and one of those, eh? Yeah. So funny. So yeah. funny. Yeah. Um, and I'll be so- honest with you, Junior, it could happen, eh? 
it could happen. You, ne you never know. You never know. I no. can't see it happening, but you never know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do have... Now, on this podcast, Senior, okay. we never call out oh, players. Oh. Okay. Oh, oh, here we go. However, I am going to call out a Dundee oh. Stars player. Oh, my God. We're going to get into trouble. And I'm not angry with this player. I'm just bitterly disappointed. Oh, oh. Spencer Gass. Oh, what one is more a... game. It was only one more game, Spencer. And you got the <sighs> fucking penalty. Oh, one my game. God. Oh, I was raging. Devastated for him. <laughs> Absolutely devastated. I couldn't believe it. Um, I believe that um, our sponsor of On This Day, Stella, had a word with him at Player of the Year um, on Monday night. Yeah. <laughs> I was just, uh, I was gutted. What, I'll was tell you though, what, what an effort. What an yeah. effort. Final Two game of the regular match. season to get yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because <laughs> the, the other thing, right, speaking about the players, Elijah Villio. Uh -huh. Now knows that he gets called big fucking sexy. Does he? <laughs> yep. Yep. I think did Becky tell him? He, she did indeed. <laughs> <laughs> the guys on the podcast call you big fucking sexy. My God. Well, well <laughs> you call him it. I just repeat it to re take the piss out of you calling him it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But yes, though. <laughs> um, what was his response? He just it. laughed. Yeah, he was just laughing about it. He was just laughing. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, call out to Spencer Nass. Oh, um, I can't believe it. You're calling out. Angry, you're calling out disappointed. The multiple award winning Spencer Nass. The multiple award winning Spencer Nass. Um, because Larzo, and I've just had it confirmed as well, it, it is his only penalty all season. He never got a penalty in Challenge Cup either. Ridiculous. Zero. Whatever. Two penalty minutes yeah. over all competitions. Yeah. So, Spencer... It's just... <sighs> and yeah. when you think about it, it's like it's not as if he's only playing like two or three minutes a game here. Right? Yeah, or or he's not forechecking and, and grinding. Yep. Because he know. does. Yep. <laughs> yep. It, it's a... Uh... Tremendous effort, eh? Two minutes and penalties. But yeah, um, what what a start that would have been to have, eh? On your on your resume, zero penalty minutes. Yeah. 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 Um, but with a call out comes a shout out for him, and being the league's top goal scorer yeah. this year, he was also third in top points. And a shout out to Mister Ryan Valentini, who ended up joint second in points with Troy Lajeunesse of Fife. So, sick, tie second, third place for points, top goal yep. scorer. Some achievement for those two boys. Definitely. Definitely. And two, that, my opinion, a lot of people will disagree, my opinion, the two of them, underline mate, need to be back next season. Yeah. Yeah. Might not go do well, that might not go do well with everybody, but yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna get one or two, get the three of them back. Yeah. And on that note, senior. It's time for the good, the bad, and the ugly. Well, I think I think the good is quite easy, and the good is we've made it. That was that is a good slash relief, but uh, I think we made it. We made it difficult for ourselves, considering where we were at, at specific points throughout the season. But we eventually got there, and that's all that matters. Coach Coolen said it when he was on. The league is all about positions. The playoffs is when the season really starts, um, and we're there. We've not finished ninth. We've not finished bottom. We've finished. Seventh, seventh, 
Yeah, seventh. And we get the card of devils. So we're in with a shout. So that was the good. The bad, um, I'll be honest with you, is, and I got a message the day saying that he was training today, right? Is Kevin Carr's injury, right? It's, it is hitting us quite a bit. Um, I think, I don't know if you'll make it this weekend. And I, and I think it's been bad overall, not through what, because Lucas has come in and done a fantastic job. He's made the GB training squad, etc., based on he, on his uh, on the games that he's played. But I think we potentially could have been, maybe no fighting during the last game if, if Kevin had played. Um, and then the ugly was, and I'm going to be honest with this, was the overall home game experience versus Fife from the result to the carry on in the stands and the fact that we should now be looking at throwing away fans into their own section. Uh, yeah. because it, it did become ugly. Uh, wasn't it too ugly at our side? Because we are good-looking people at our side. The other side, it did get a bit, it did get a bit ugly at the other side because that's where all the ugly folk are. And then the Fifers were there as well, which made it even uglier. So, yeah. So, are you uh, speaking about that Andy Strange again? Well, I'm not saying that. I'm not naming names. Oh, no, so, sorry. Dean Flynn's over that side. That's what <laughs> So I'm the good you. is we made it, the good is we made it at last. The bad is the ongoing Kevin Carr injury saga, and then the ugly was the 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 whole thing about the five game. That's it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, it does bring us on to uh, the Liam Mean Tattoo sponsored game preview, and we didn't I think we we we're, we're, un, we're unsure last week if we were going to have one of these. And um, we do. So we do have our playoff games, which again, the home and home with the Cardiff Devils. We have spoke about them. Well, we have spoke about them five times this season because we missed the last one. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, listen, we don't always postpone. No, like Dundee Football Club. But um, we've, uh, we've spoken about it before. Big players, uh, Wee Dix, Cole Sanford, Trevor Cox, top class players, but will get involved with shit and get away with it, especially Cole Sanford, the fucking yeah. Scott Brown of the Cardiff Devils, the unbookable, yeah. the un- unpenalised. Um, you know what? what? What I think is really ironic now, right, is it sort of kicked off down in Cardiff at the 6-3 game near mm. the end we fail it right and I'll bet you that I, I would probably think they've thought we're not going to be playing them again mm. and all of a sudden they've now got win the playoffs yeah right um, and I hope Phelan plays exactly the same way and he gets in their faces yeah um, you may find that Puglio will suddenly become a wee bit harder again Especially yeah. against them. However, it's got to be disciplined. We just can't go out there and, and just try and mix it and rough it out and, and hope for the best. I think we've got to be disciplined in in, in our game uh, and see what happens. I know I'd, lo- I'd love it to... Can what? See if it's going to be undisciplined. Let's be undisciplined in Dundee when the game's finished and just go about kicking heads in. That's what I'm up for. Yeah. Um, and you might find that could happen based on what happened at the 6 3 game. It's going to be so difficult. I'm going to say Bounds is going to play both games. I can't see them going to be the guy wall. I think Bounds will play both games. Depending on what happens on Saturday. Listen, if we go down there and pump them on Saturday, and it's Bounds that's in. Bounds might not play Sunday. But I think for me, keep it close. One goal, two goals. Possibly maximum if we're behind by three, I think we're in with a shout. And if we could keep it to that, then I think we'll do it. Yeah, I think we've got think. the ability to do it. We've got the we've got the offense, the offensive players to do it. 
if we just tighten up at the back and uh, and be disciplined. And not allow Cardiff Devils a yeah. two-on-one break. Yeah. Um, I think that was something that I, I pointed out again in the Fife game was we well, always had a D-man jumping up in the rush. Yeah. Four went to the net, had one D-man at the back, that's a two-on-one nearly every time. It happened yeah. a lot in the second and third period. So yeah. you give those guys a chance, Sanford, Cox, yeah. Martin, the, even the boy Arniel, um, they're all the same. They're yeah. all the same type of player. They'll go in that rush, quick breaks. If, if, we're, if we play a disciplined road game, I kind of see guys pinching up, I think. They'll only pinch if, if it's a hundred percent guarantee they're getting the puck. I can't see them there, especially in the first game. The second game, if we're maybe having to chase the game, then of course you've got to do it. And then the worst what happens, the worst happens. But yeah. for me, keep it tight on the Saturday. Be disciplined. Play a real shite road game. Yeah, and hope for the best. Wait, I was waiting to say the road game. We can't just sit on top of Tuna though no, no. can he just sit and defend and defend for 60 no. minutes because it'll no work um, no. we it's need got, to be able to take chances but be solid that's and tight. It. definitely keep it keep it tight as I say keep out of penalty trouble because they can Cardiff have got quite a decent power play um, we cannot afford to take silly penalties we can't afford to get guys kicked out that may lead to suspensions. You can't what dops are like with us. Just be controlled and yeah. try and you know what? Try and take the emotion out of it more than anything else because it's two legs. You know what I mean? We don't yeah. we don't hate to go and we don't hate to go mad in the first game. Just be controlled about it. Keep it close. If we win, brilliant. If we don't. Keep it close. It even tapped the draw because it could yeah. finish a draw, and this is the funny yeah. thing about it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, right, score prediction then. Score prediction: I shall go four-two Devils. That is exactly what I have said for the away leg. Home yeah. leg. The home leg. You ready? Yeah. I think we're going to win five-three. Okay. Um, Which, I went. If my maths makes that right, we're level. Lose by two, win by two, we're level. We're going to sneak it. Okay. We're going to sneak it on fucking um, penalty shots or something. I've so I've put four two devils and I think three two devils. I think we're going to be drawing two all, and it's going to be a, a pull the goalie to try and catch up. I think they'll score an empty netter. Okay, Doc. Or two. I think he even could be 2 1 up chasing it. And then a couple of empty net goals. Yeah. So yeah, um, but I, I think I think Cardiff will I think Cardiff will sneak it. Gonna be a tough one. That it's is, gonna be as but I'm certainly looking forward to it. And on 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 what? that note, before well, can't just stop? You never tell us you were going to the next segment. Can what I mean? The picture. Just a wee a reminder. Man. Just a wee reminder, right? For fans going to the game on Sunday, stickers, okay? Stickers. Although season ticket holders have to pay for the game, we still get our own seat. So if you see a reserved seat. Don't sit in it. The season ticket holder may turn up. Yeah, just a point of order. Okay, thank you. Crack on. We'll go again. We'll go again. You know what, fellas? It's fight night. Junior versus senior. The gloves are off. So. Gloves off sponsor Junior versus Senior. Uh, senior did not get his guest last week, um, which was Francois Bouchard. Yep. So the score is currently 
Eight three me. So I need to get it wrong for senior to be able to try and tie with the first guess on next week's. Yeah. And, and then, then they, but then we might have a final four edition and then we might have an end of the season show show. I can still yeah. win. But if he does they I get this nice wee gold medal. <laughs> Listen, if I was to win that medal, if I was to win that medal, your mum would throw them out anyway, like the rest of the medals I won. Oh, like can you say that when she doesn't really listen to the podcast, eh? Because you would be shaking. Uh, you better believe it. Right, you ready? Clue number one. And I'm I'm gonna say it again because I say it every week. I'll be got to be done to get this. Oh, okay. Fuck. So this guy was born September the 13th, 1990, in Saint-Julie or Saint-Julie, Quebec. Quebec. You'll get it. Relatively young. So Relatively I'm young. going to Same go age with... as you. Here you go. Get ready I to press the button. Uh, oh, yeah, shit. I need to be on that page, don't yeah. I? Yeah. Um, be wrong, but I'm going to go the rat Philippe Sanch. No, <laughs> okay, it is not Philippe Sanch. Okay, this guy played four years at St. Thomas University in the CIS. Three of those years he was captain. St. Thomas, CIS, four years, four years at St. Thomas. Three years as captain. Four years as captain. Uh, I'm trying to think of some French Canadian names. Oh, because I like because he was one of my favourite players as well that season. Ah, press it right. Go on and press a button then. Just press it. Kevin Defour. <laughs> nope, it's not Kevin Defour. Okay. He then moved on to the ECHL, where he played for two years for the Alaska Aces, playing Ooh. 84 games, scoring eight goals and 14 assists. Demon. Eight goals, 14 assists. Yes, indeed. Two years. Two years, 84 games. So it makes me think he's a demon. Demon for Quebec. I don't know where, I, I don't know if he's for Quebec. I don't know where he played before. The only boy I could really think of. I remember about that age. And I fucking hated him. Sean Bhutan. It okay. is not Sean Bhutan. <laughs> wow. Good guess, no? This is when you'll get it. You ready? Okay. Because I've put another wee clue in after the main clue. So, <laughs> when he signed for the Stars, he played 51 games and ended up with 50 points, 17 goals, and 33 assists. Oh. 51 games. Yeah. Well, I'll give you the extra wee clue. Sorry, what was it? 51 games. 51 games, 17 plus 33. 30 assists. Okay. Would mm. you like the wee extra clue there? You can throw it in if you want. Okay, it doesn't bother me because I'm getting pumped anyway. So, at the end of our season, he went to Australia. And now, played with the Newcastle North Stars. Now, ah, oh, fuck. I um, I seen this because it was uh, when I was doing the On This Day and it was close. I was going to include it. Fuck, who was it again? Um, oh, my God. I remember. Oh, I, remember I, was, I, I, wish I, I wish I'd fucking wrote it down now. Junior, um, I can't think of his name. It's no pulling. It's no pulling. But that's who keeps coming back to me. Wait, no, Felix Santa. No, 
that's who keeps coming back to my head. Um, oh. I can't think he's named now. Come on, Junior. We've got dead there. Oh, I know. I can't. I can't think. I can't think. Well, his name is. I can picture him. What do you look like? Big nose. Big nose. <laughs> 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 I hope he doesn't listen to this. I'll just call him a big yeah, nose. Wow. Um, oh, what's his name? Michael Poirier. <laughs> so there's another one that went over there. Not um, Michael Poirier. <sighs> you ready? Yeah. Final clue. After this, his stint in Australia, then, the following season, he went to Slovakia and then came back to the EIHL with the Brayhead clan and then the Manchester Storm. Fuck it, Wes. And where's the other end? Felix Antoine Poulin. <laughs> you absolute knob. Oh. There was a few, but mind it's at no that pulling, time. It's no pulling. <laughs> oh, I, could, I, I just couldn't fucking. And I was trying to think because um, a lot of players used to go back and forth in the summer for yeah. for that. Yes. Um, so that's who it was. It was Felix Antoine Poulin with the bomb from the blue line. Yeah. So a point for me, uh, which puts it to nine three. Virginia. See, when you look at Poulin's stats, eh, two years in the ECHL, 84 games, 22 points, and then comes yeah. to us and gets 50 points in 51 games. Yeah. He was a player for us like Poulin. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So, I, that is our Gloves Off sponsor, Junior versus Senior. I eventually <laughs> fucking got it. Um, now time to move on to Slumming World with Stella, sponsored on this day. So, again, if you are looking to Share a few pounds. Stella is all over Facebook. She's all over that fucking rink. She's there every bloody day as well. So if you're wanting to, get in touch with her. Give her a shout at the games. She will put you in the right direction to all of her classes and also other people um, to help you lose some of that. Some of those pounds for some nice little holidays that will be coming up from May onwards. Um but on this day, is what she sponsors. On this day, senior, born in 1987, just across the water, is Lee Mitchell. Young Mitch. Young Mitch. No very young, young Mitch. Mitch now. No, I know. <laughs> he was a pain in the arse, was he, young Mitch? Fuck, it was a pain in the arse. He was, oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, um, used to like young young match was good when he played with us. So was his brother, young young match. But um, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Lee, Lee, Lee Mitchell was was a very good British player. Yeah, so um, Lee only played uh, thirty six games for us. Uh, he had five goals and fifteen assists in that time, and was part of the trade deal for Kyle Bruce. Then he went to the clan, and Kyle Bruce came over to us. Uh, but we did sign him from the old Stingrays um, after he he was there since 2005 uh, yeah. in Hull. Uh, he played three games in the Elite League, but then um, 2005-2006 season, Hull Stingrays right through to us in 2011-2012. Um, Lee Mitchell, uh, by the way, is 37 now, senior. Nah, stop it. Yeah. Um, signings on this day in 2011. The Dundee Stars signed Lee Mitchell. <laughs> Young Mitch, he was a player, was he? <laughs> so, um, so was his brother Craig. Um, Lee yeah. signed for the Stars from the Hull Stingrays in 
You <laughs> <laughs> played for them since 2005. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, young Mitch signed for us on his birthday in 2011. On this day in 2016, senior, and no word of a lie, I didn't know this until I, I never, I never know on this day until I look at it on the day. I actually okay. do it on my lunch break. On this day, 2016, the star signed my good friend. Sponsor of the show, Cam McGiffin. Just move on. Love it. <laughs> That's very rude. Very rude. Yeah. Um, uh, McGiff. <laughs> what a boy. Friend of yeah. the show, sponsor of the show. Yeah. Even the, even cuts Jack Butlins here. Well, that was Kai that did it, and then Cam put the post up with fucking Union Jack, and uh, yeah, yeah, there'll be words heard next time I'm in again about that pitch. Yeah, definitely. Um, contract extension in 2018 on this day was used to be one of our own, Jordan County, and finally on this day, we only had one game, 2022. It was a home league loss to our unwashed friends from Fife by four goals to two. Goals by Eldoro Loco and the wee boy that's in Brayhead that's now away playing mini golf for the rest of the summer, Charlie Combs. Yeah, <laughs> Charlie. Mm. <laughs> There's a story in itself, eh? After what's happened at the end of the season, firing pucks and okay. arguing with so fans. He, he wasn't arguing with fans and he didn't fire the puck. I have it on good authority from a number of people that that did sure. not happen. Right. <laughs> so there's a number of people who say that has happened and there's a number of people that say that it's no harm. Right. But I'll tell you what could come out of this. Right. See the deals that are the boys have signed early doors. They mean nothing. Oh, I know. We've um, always said that. These contracts mean nothing. Yeah. Um, um, he he accidentally hit a puck in the crowd. So he's probably fired he's probably fired the puck off the board and it's went ski with. He's probably been pissed off. It's went ski with. And the waving and the speaking up to the crowd was apologizing. For, hitting, for the puck getting fired into that section. So, totally blown out that's, of proportion. But nah, then I can. That's the usual with the clam. Blown but, everything out of proportion. Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm going to go on a limb here, right? And and say that if he's pissed off in Glasgow, he's more than welcome to come back here. I don't think he, he would. would. Fit in, no, I don't think he would now, but I think he would fit in quite nicely with the setup that we've got. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that is on this day. That was all that happened. A couple of signings, contract extension, one player born, and one game. Which brings us to the end of our playoff edition. Hands oh, up. Permission to speak. Game. No, honestly. Granted, it's... sir. Granted. So I don't want to finish on a sad note, but I will finish on a sad I will finish on a sad note. You can bring it back up again. Um, so once again, we've lost a member of the Stars family, the Section C family. Uh, Christine McKenzie sadly passed away uh, last weekend. Uh, we got the news before the five game, which put a bit of a bummer on that to start off with. Uh, Christine and Alec have been at the Stars games probably phase like us right for the start. Close to the start, sat close to the back of section C behind us. Um, Christine was treasurer of the supporters club when we were going through the SNL days and done an absolutely fantastic job. I have had permission, I have had permission to do this because you've probably seen us looking at my phone. That was a young lad, Stuart, who I used to work with. Uh, messages has given me details of the funeral. Um, and if you don't mind, for because I know a lot of people have asked, and the funeral 
is on the 23rd of this month at half past one at the crematorium in Dundee. So condolences to the McKinsey family. I did ask Stuart. Stuart said he would love if we'd done it. Um, I also believe that Alex coming to the game on Sunday, which would that's be good. good. He's bringing his three grandsons. So that's I'd be good to see them. So, yeah, another loss in, in our Section C squad there. But yep. uh, so it's been a, an absolute shit start of the year. But hopefully, maybe the team will make it a, a happy weekend, and then we'll get to the final four. And then you never know; we might be we might be finishing on a real high. So, condolences yeah, yeah. to everybody associated with Christine McKenzie from yeah. from all stars fans, but from us uh, on a view from Section C. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, yeah, fuck well. I've known Christine yeah. since what? How old was it? I would have been oh. ten when I first met her. So, yeah. um, exactly. Literally grew up knowing her. So yeah, no, it's it's very sad. Um, and as you say, we we worked with Stuart for few, yeah. many years as well. So yeah, thoughts go out to all of them. But yeah, here's hoping we are, we do finish it on a high. Um, yep. This season, hopefully, we do get some good results this weekend over the two legs. Um, and we are sitting here next week with another preview on the episode and not just what would be our end of the season show show so yeah. it could be our end of the season show show but it might not it might be our final four show yeah. so fingers crossed but again we turned up in our numbers last weekend we turned up with the noise um let's do the exact same again this weekend be loud and proud and let's cheer these guys on to hopefully another playoff fixture 